Auburn University, where for the next couple of weeks we're going to visit with some biosystems engineering students. First of all, we're going to talk with Daniel Mullinex today, and we're going to hear about his biodiesel project and how it's helping American farmers. Let's go check it out. Well, Grace, you know, today bioenergy is a hot topic, you know, going green, that, those sorts of things. And as an undergraduate student, I became interested in bioenergy. And what I decided to do in my master's, I wanted to implement um, a project that dealt with bioenergy that would help the Alabama farmer specifically. So my project directly deals with producing biodiesel from crops grown on farm. So the idea is that a farmer can grow an oilseed crop such as soybeans, canola, peanuts, cotton, crops such as those that we can grow in Alabama. Um, canola is not grown as much as, as some of the others, but it can be used as a winter cover crop in place of winter wheat. And it's excellent, excellent oil producing crop. So farmers can use those crops, grow those crops, harvest them, press those seeds in mechanical screw press, extract the oil, take the oil to um, their biodiesel processor, process the oil and make it into biodiesel through a process called transesterification. And they can take that biodiesel and use it on farm in their equipment. Um, how um, available are those production facilities? Is that going to be an obstacle that you'll have to overcome? Actually, the production facility in my project would be on the farm. Everything would be kept on farm. You know, 100% value of the crop would be on farm, as well as the full system to produce the biodiesel with. So you would have a mechanical screw press on your farm to extract the oil, as well as biodiesel processor to, to process the oil into biodiesel. How, what's going to be the difficulty here for farmers to get this kind of technology on their farm? Is it going to be really expensive or um, are, is it, they going to have difficulty assembling the products? How, how will this work? There's a little bit of startup cost involved in it um, and there's some, some chemical cost that uh, a farmer would incur. Um, the real bottleneck in the system right now that I'm, I'm working with try to, to remedy or try to resolve for the farmer is the economics of the system. So, you know, we've experienced high fuel prices recently. Um, some commodity prices are, are pretty high, you know, such as, as soybeans. They've been high for the past couple of years. Um, so defining the economics of the system in terms of how it can be profitable for the farmer is going to be one hurdle that I hope to overcome with my project. Um, I hope to develop a, a model that a farmer can use so that he can put in current commodity prices, put in current petroleum fuel prices, and then see, based on the crop he's grown, is it economical for him to produce biodiesel in that year. All right, Daniel, what do we have here? Well, Grace, this is our biodiesel lab where we make biodiesel. And this is a mechanical screw press. This press can press oil seeds such as soybeans that we have here or canola that we have here. Like I said, canola is about 40% oil and Soybeans are about 18% oil, and with this machine, we can extract that oil from the seeds to use for our biodiesel. Okay, show me, uh, and I know we, we're not going to turn it on, but show me how this process would work. Okay, so first of all, you put the seeds in the hopper, and <clears throat> there's a auger here in between these plates that turns, and as it turns, it presses the seeds as the seeds flow this way. So it, it presses the seeds, and the oil drops onto this pan here and we collect it in a bucket. And then the cake part of the system, the cake comes out the end, and that's the part that we can feed to cattle or to livestock. Now just as a point of reference, if I were to pour this whole thing of canola seed in here, how much oil would I get out of this? Theoretically, you should get 40% by weight of whatever that weighs. Okay, and the, the waste comes out at what point? At what? The cake comes out here on the end. And that can be used to go back into. That can be okay. used to go so, into livestock feed. All right. Now the byproduct after the oil comes out, you have cake that's left over. Tell me, tell me about the cake that you have here. Uh, well, Grace, this cake has had the oil extracted from it, and it's really high in protein, so it, it's an excellent source of of food supplementation for livestock. This cake here came from soybeans, and this cake here is from canola. Now these are known uh, for their protein content? Yes. So a, a farmer can kind of get a dual purpose out of one of his, his crops if, if this is possible to come out of this. Exactly. You know, the, the main goal of this is to, first of all, lower the fuel bill 
And then secondly, try to aid in lowering the feed bill. Supplement that, that feed cost. Now, I see here, Daniel, it says waste vegetable oil. So I'm supposing maybe this is sort of in concept, the same thing that we just viewed earlier. Yeah, Grace, this is the second part to that process. So once the oil is extracted, there's a little bit of organic material that would still be in the oil. So you have to allow it to settle before you can make your biodiesel. You don't want any particulates in the oil when you, when you process it to biodiesel. Right. So in this tank, we allow our oil to settle. Now you can see an interface here from sludge accumulation to the good oil. Right. So we allow it to settle for about two weeks, depending on temperature outside that, that dictates the, the settling. And then we can transfer it to our biodiesel processor. So Grace, once the glycerol separates from the biodiesel and we drain it off, then we have to remove our excess alcohol that we added. So we add twice the amount of alcohol that we need for the reaction to take place. So we'll heat the biodiesel back up to above the boiling point of alcohol. We'll drive the alcohol off and collect it to recycle it later. And then we transfer our biodiesel into our recovery tank here. In this tank, there is a product called Amberlite that actually purifies the biodiesel. We filter it through this product and it removes any excess catalyst that you have in the product, any excess glycerol that you have, and it purifies the biodiesel so that we can then use it in our our tractors, our farm equipment. So after it goes into this uh, station right here and it comes out, it's ready to go. It's finished product. It's ready to go. All right. And again, this would be uh, <clears throat> the containers that you just showed us and then this process right here would be another um, part of the equipment that farmers could have on their farm. Yep. So with those and then the oil seed press that we saw earlier, all of that can produce this. Sure can. Simply those things. Yep. Simply those That's things. That's pretty remarkable.